Shockwave is an Intamin stand-up coaster at Drayton Manor, and in this review, I'll be sharing my thoughts and opinions on this interesting coaster. If you do enjoy the review, please be sure to like and subscribe, it's free and I really appreciate it guys. Without further ado, here's what I think of Shockwave. Shockwave's location in Drayton Manor is to the right side of the park from the main entrance, and it's nice seeing the ride from across the lake. The colour scheme looks good, two different shades of blue, and the station is nicely presented from the outside. There's various amounts of theming, and it is a pretty nice station building if I'm being honest, even if it is raised up to allow the rapids to run beneath it. However, that's closed for the time being. Most of the queue line is beneath said station, and a lot of it is cattle pen. But it's not that bad as there's windows to look out at the coaster going past as well as being air conditioned which is perfect on a nice hot summer's day. Once you enter the loading area you can queue up for the front row queue which I recommend or alternatively any of the other rows. The actual area isn't themed but you know you win some you lose some. Now here's where things get tricky. You walk onto the train and get into your restraints. They're not very good at all in my opinion. They're unbelievably complex, as well as you're sitting on, well, I say sitting, you're standing as such on a bicycle seat like post. And um, if you're a male, yeah, good luck. Final say on the restraints, please get it right when you come to ride this coaster. It can completely change your ride experience. Set them to your exact standing height, no more, no less, and the ride will not be as painful, I can assure you. Compared to the big one and Nemesis, which as well as Shockwave, all debuted in 1994, this coaster has the worst restraints of the lot in my opinion. Once you leave the station, you go along some straight track, then a small dip before you climb up the lift hill. I do like how to your left you can see the rest of the park and the stunning lake below. It's quite picturesque and I really like it. Following the lift you then go into a pre-drop which is normally found on B&Ms. But this coaster, although built by Intamin, was subcontracted by Giovanola. This is why the ride has a pre-drop as well as having the classic B&M track type. Other YouTubers have made videos about Giovanola, Intamin and B&M, so I'd go and check them out if you want to learn more about this kind of stuff. Descending the first drop, you pick up speed relatively quickly, and the curved nature of it makes it pretty good and decently forceful. Definitely one of the better moments on the ride for me. This is when you're going to thank yourself for making sure your restraint is at the correct height. Following the drop, you then go into the first of four inversions, which is a vertical loop, my personal favourite part of the ride. It's decently forceful going in and going out. No hang time at the top, thankfully, however, it is uncomfortable due to the restraints and the jerkiness of the ride. I would by no means consider the ride rough, but it's not the smoothest coaster out there either. But looking past that, the inversion's pretty good. Another inversion follows which is a zero G roll, the only one on a stand up coaster and it's taken at a good speed. The ride can feel a little bit shaky here as well though. From there you go into some small curved track, pretty pointless but at least you can gather your thoughts before the double corkscrew. Much like the past two inversions on the ride, I found the double corkscrew to be just uncomfortable. Again, the restraints make it that much worse. To end the ride, you go into a slow unbanked turn into the brakes, which are absolutely horrible. You slam to a stop from a decent speed, and in my opinion, the worst part of the ride is not any of the inversions, it's the brakes, because when you're standing up, oh, it's not comfortable at all. By no means is Shockwave a horrendously bad ride, in fact I rate it higher than many other coasters that I've ridden, but this coaster would be so much better if B&M came in and gave the ride flawless trains, maybe adding an ejector airtime hill as well before the corkscrews. Honestly, if this happened and the ride was better, I would probably be going to Drayton Manor a lot more than I do, because Drayton Manor is actually my home park, but I don't go at all to be honest. 
To conclude, Shockwave may not be one of the best coasters in the UK in my opinion, but the station building, location of the ride and stand up position give it a unique experience you can't find anywhere else in Europe. You've been watching Stubwood, please be sure to check out some of my other videos and subscribe if you want to. On that note, I hope you all have a fantastic day. Thank you.